Welcome back. This is The Ben Shapiro Show. Joining us online is Jim Carafano, Vice President of the Catherine and Shelby Cullum Davis Institute for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. Jim, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, it's great to be with you. So let's talk about the, the Biden team's Iran plan. So Biden himself is now saying that he wants to re-enter the Iran deal, basically no preconditions. There was originally a take that they were going to redo the Iran deal, but this time include anti-terrorism and anti-ballistic missile development. Now he's basically overtly saying, no, nope, we're just going to go right back to what the Iran deal was in the first place, which is a license for Iran to create a bomb in a certain number of years and all the money that they get, they can use for terrorism and ballistic missile development. Well, look, I just don't I just don't know how that works. What, what do you do about the Iranian cheating? Right. So they're enriching to 12 times the authorized level under the agreement. Does that mean you just lift all the sanctions and they continue to do that? I mean, that's there's just all kinds of issues that, that just aren't addressed. What about the, the arms embargo? You're just going to lift the arms embargo? And here's the problem for Biden. If he just races back and pretends that the last four years didn't happen and none of this matters, how long do you think it'll be before the unbelievable negative consequences of that will come out? And would he just say, well, that's all Trump's fault? Do you think people would really believe that? Do you think anybody in the Middle East would actually forgive him for letting Iran out of the cage? I look here. Look, every president wants to start out focusing on domestic issues. Great. Get that. Literally, he will set the Middle East on fire and it will never he will never he would never, ever recover from that. So well, let's talk for a second about what exactly the bad consequences would be. So let's say he tries to reenter the Iran deal. There's a couple of possibilities here. One is that all of the nascent peace developments between Israel and its Arab neighbors actually strengthen because Saudi Arabia says, OK, well, Iran is obviously gaining power. We need further alliances. We need to we need to band together with nations that oppose Iran and they get closer with Israel and some of the other Arab states. The other possibility is that they try to make overtures to the Biden administration by being overtly anti-Israel because the tacit understanding is that when Obama was was pro-Iran, he was being anti-Israel in the process. Which way do you think the Arab world goes? Well, I think what would happen is normalization would collapse. They would see this as the United States withdrawing from the region. They would immediately turn to China to start to leverage their bets, um, and they would turn to Russia. And so essentially what you would be doing would be igniting a great power competition in the Middle East, which is, which is just you know, a formula for, for absolute chaos. And what would that great power conflict look like? Let's say China and Russia get involved. If the United States you know, pulls out, presumably, uh, you know, Iran is rising and then you have Turkey in, in the region. I think people neglect the fact that this is basically how we get sucked back into conflicts, is that the United States constantly thinks that if it just withdraws from a particular area, that we stay out of there forever. And that, that rarely is the case. Well, look, I mean, there, I think there, this could be a hot war, and it would be, you could have a hot war between is, Israel and Iran. And look, and it'll, everybody will be for themselves. I mean, this is the, the problem is, is um, none of the powers in the region really have the capacity to control the region. On the other hand, they really have the capacity to, to, to mess with each other. And so once that starts, what, what do they do? Do they start to reach out to other powers you know, outside the region to pull in? And this, is, this is how great power conflicts get started. It's it's the scariest thing you could possibly imagine. And I just I just struggle to understand how they would do this. First of all, you know, in this part of the world, honor is power. Right. We think you're, you're a good guy. You pay taxes. You don't beat your wife. You're an honorable person in the Middle East. You're honorable if you are somebody that has a lot of power and you exercise that. So for for Biden, essentially to to flip over, you know, like a like a happy dog. And, and let the Iranians have everything they want. Everybody would perceive that Iran, Iran has great power and the United States is feckless. Mm. And he would undermine literally all his authority uh, in the region. I just, I just don't see how this works. Uh, Jim Carafano, Vice President of the National Security and Foreign Policy Institute over at Heritage Foundation. Appreciate your time and the insight. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel 
and sharing our videos with your family and friends.